Audi is targeting the growing market for compact 5-seat crossovers with a much improved version of its stylish little Q3. This car is now cleverer, smarter and more efficient, all of these being attributes it'll need if it's to make headway in this increasingly crowded segment. When it comes to this kind of car, there are certainly cheaper options. The question though is whether there are really any more desirable ones. Sales of five-seat Qashqai-class crossovers have certainly taken off in recent years. Nor is it only the mainstream brands that are offering us cars of this kind. Family hatches with raised ride heights and a dose of SUV-style attitude. The premium makers are at it too, with cars like this one, Audi's much-improved first-generation Q3. This model has been a useful seller for the Ingolstadt maker since its launch in 2011, but these days it's facing tougher competition. Its closest rival, BMW's X1, has upped its game, and Mercedes has also entered this profitable market niche with its GLA class model. On top of that, mainstream brand crossovers like Nissan's Qashqai offer higher quality than they ever used to. Nor would it have escaped the attention of potential Q3 buyers that for the same kind of money being asked here, they could have a slightly larger RAV4 or Honda CRV style compact SUV. For all these reasons, this Audi needed to evolve, and it has, in the improved Mark I model guys that the company launched early in 2015, the Q3 we're going to look at here. As before, the brand has kept the cost of this car in check by basing it on a Volkswagen Golf platform, giving it a simpler on-demand quattro four-wheel drive system and farming its production out to Seat in Spain. As for what's different, well, the looks are slightly smarter and there's a bit more equipment, but the main changes lie beneath the bonnet. There, buyers are treated to a completely revised and now fully Euro 6 compatible turbocharged engine range that offers more power, yet considerably greater levels of efficiency. There's also improved safety, slightly sharper handling and as much on-the-move connectivity as you could ask for, courtesy of the brand's clever optional Audi Connect multimedia system. Will it all be enough to keep this car at the forefront of the smart end of the compact five-seat crossover sector? Is it still enough to allow the Q3 to justify its price premium over something more ordinary in this segment? And is this still a cleverer, more desirable alternative to that soft-roading, compact SUV you may have been thinking about? Time to find out. If ever there were any doubts that this car is more of a crossover, a family hatchback with SUV styling cues, than any kind of proper compact SUV, then the Q3's road-going experience should set them firmly to rest. Yes, you have this class of car's more commanding driving position at the helm, but otherwise, the at-the-wheel experience is exactly like the ordinary focus-sized five-door model you might be driving right now. Unlike a truly capable 4x4, it doesn't roll through the bends or crash through the potholes that infest our country's terrible tarmac, which means that virtually no acclimatization is required if you come fresh to Q3 ownership from something more conventional. But then much the same is true of any crossover model. In essence, that's partly the point of this kind of car. Lifestyle attitude without any of the adventure-orientated mechanicals you probably don't really need. Things like the kind of weighty permanent four-wheel drive system you get on all versions of this car's larger Q5 showroom stablemate. This Q3 may look very similar to that car, but under the skin it's a very different thing, with engineering that for all the Vorsprung Duck technique marketing is really more Volkswagen based than borrowed from anything you'd recognise in an Audi. That means underpinnings shared with an old Mark VI Golf and the kind of simpler multi-plate clutch on-demand four-wheel drive setup you get in the Wolfsburg brand's compact Tiguan SUV. With this system, even Quattro-driven C3 models will nearly always power themselves solely through their front wheels. Only if traction slippage is detected will that multi-plate clutch transfer torque to the rear axle for extra grip. The differences between this setup and the larger Q5 model's permanent Quattro system will be almost irrelevant to likely Q3 owners, especially as Audi has gone to some lengths to maximise this car's effectiveness in slippery conditions. 
To that end, there's a rather ambitious sounding off-road setting for the ESC stability control system that adjusts things like the ABS braking and the electronic differential lock to suit muddy or icy surfaces. And there's the option of a hill descent assist system that'll keep your speed constant down steep, slippery slopes. Not that these can be too steep, mind you. Modest approach and departure angles and a limited 170mm ride height that falls further to 150mm on sportier S-line variants like this one will limit any unrealistic ambitions of piste But, as I've said, you won't be buying this car with thoughts of striking out across the Serengeti. Most Q3 owners, indeed, will take the opportunity to save both money and weight and choose a power plant that will allow them to order their cars without any Quattro technology at all. Two engines allow this option, with the least expensive of the pair, the 1.4-litre TFSI petrol unit, actually only available in two-wheel drive form. Here you get clever COD cylinder-on-demand technology that shuts off two of the available four cylinders under light throttle loads to save fuel, and a pokey 150 PS output that will see this car to 62 miles an hour in 8.9 seconds, on the way to a top speed of 126 miles an hour. Most buyers, though, will probably want a diesel. It's the lower-powered 2-litre TDI derivative with power output enhanced in this revised model from 140 to 150 PS that can come front-driven, a variant capable of 62 miles per hour in 9.6 seconds en route to 126 miles an hour. Most owners, though, tend to upgrade this variant with the extra-cost option of Quattro Traction, if only because this is necessary to give themselves the chance of specifying the brand's slick 7-speed Estronic dual-clutch auto transmission that comes as an alternative to the standard six-speed manual gearbox. I'm actually trying an S-Tronic box here, though in this case it's mated to the Pokia of the two TDIs available to Q3 folk, this particular two-litre unit only available with Quattro four-wheel drive. It's also been enhanced to this updated Q3, now putting out 184 PS, and therefore being the same engine as you'd find in a Golf GTD hot hatch. Hence, rapid performance that'll see you make 62 miles an hour from rest in just 7.9 seconds on the way to 136 miles an hour. On the subject of rapid performance, if that's your overriding priority, then as a Q3 buyer, you'll be turning your attention to the pair of high-speed petrol variants, both of which come only with Quattro Traction and the S-Tronic gearbox. First up is the 2-litre TFSI model, offering 180 PS. If you're quick with the steering-mounted gear shift paddles, it'll get you from rest to 62 miles an hour in 7.6 seconds, en route to 142 miles an hour. In a different league altogether, though, is the flagship version of this car, the RS Q3, one of the very fastest crossovers it's possible to buy. Here, the 2.5-litre turbo unit, this variant borrows from Audi's old TTRS sports car, has been upgraded to 340 PS as part of the changes to this revised Q3 lineup, which is enough to power it to 62 miles an hour in just 4.8 seconds, on the way to a top speed that has to be artificially limited to 155 miles per hour. What's primarily important to most Q3 owners, though, is not how fast their car is, but how it drives. You'll actually have quite a degree of control over that, thanks to the standardisation across the range of Audi's Drive Select chassis dynamic system, operable via this dash-mounted button here. Via four settings, efficiency, auto, comfort and dynamic, this setup allows you to tweak throttle response, steering feel and, on S-Tronic models, gear shift timings to suit the way you want to drive. Opt for the extra cost adjustable dampers and via these settings you can tailor the suspension setup on the road you're on too. You'll certainly need this additional feature to mitigate the rather firm ride delivered by variants like this one fitted with larger 18 or 19 inch alloy wheels. If you are going to drive your Q3 enthusiastically, you'll have to overcome the rather vague steering feel that applies even if you click into Drive Select's sharpest dynamic setting. If you can, then one of the things that might surprise you is just how sure-footed it feels now, powering out of sharp turns. It turns out there's a reason for this, thanks to the addition of a torque vectoring system that imperceptibly breaks your wheels at the inside of a curve. When power is applied, the excess torque then flows to the outer wheel, which helps to maximise traction and makes the car steer through the bend more precisely. 
Most of the time, though, you'll simply settle back into the smooth, relaxed demeanor that characterizes this car. Perhaps you'll appreciate the impressive refinement helped by the acoustic windscreen, or possibly the practicality of the 75 kilogram roof load, or the useful towing capacity that can see you haul as much as two tons. These are all sensible reasons that could justify Q3 ownership, but ultimately, you'll probably buy this car because of the way it makes you feel. There's none of that rather pointless, over-engineered capability you get from any kind of proper SUV. Just a vehicle thoroughly fit for purpose. Those who, perhaps understandably, think that Audi has done little more than shrink a Q5 in a hot wash to create this model, might be interested to find that it's actually based on a concept car, the Cross Coupe Quattro, announced in 2007, well before that larger SUV saw the light of day. That prototype seemed pretty avant-garde back then on the motor show circuit, but in finished production form, this Q3 has always seemed a conservative-looking thing, though the coupe-like roofline and sharply sloped D-pillars do give this silhouette an expressive and sporting demeanour. With this revised model, Audi's design team has tried to further build on this. Primarily at the front, where the brand's familiar single-frame front grille is now more distinctive, with a 3D effect emphasised by chromed vertical bars on this S-Line model and enlarged top corners that extend to revised headlights that use either Xenon Plus, all-weather or full LED technology, depending on the trim level you choose. The bumper's sleeker too, as are the honeycomb grills and struts in the air intakes. A front splitter completes the effect, extending forward below the flat centre intake. The rear, as before, features a kind of sculpted wraparound tailgate that's used on all Audi Q models to amplify a sense of width. And the large, undivided taillights feature LED technology and a smarter look. Lower down, the diffuse has been redesigned too. Plus, there are dual chrome-tipped tailpipes to the left and an underbody guard to supply the final SUV-style finishing touch. In profile, buyers of the original version of this model may notice smarter alloy wheels that can be anything from 17 to 20 inches in size, whilst those who previously could only stretch to entry-level trim will notice that the full body colour paint finish, previously only found on top versions, is now standard across the range. From this perspective, you also fully appreciate just how compact this car is. At less than 4.4 metres long, it's 250 millimetres shorter than a Q5, as well as being 70 millimetres narrower and sitting 65 millimetres lower. <coughs> You'd expect to feel the effect of this from a seat here in the rear. And sure enough, taller passengers may struggle a little with headroom that's slightly compromised by that coupe-style rear roofline. Legroom is at a slight premium too, an issue that can't be alleviated here as it can in the Q5 by the option of a sliding facility that would allow you to push this seat base backwards. Having said all of that, it's no more cramped back here than it would be in comparable premium compact crossover models like BMW's X1 and Mercedes GLA class. So a couple of more modestly dimensioned folks should have few problems. The scoops in the rear of the front seats make a big difference when it comes to space for your knees and three small children will fit in just fine. <coughs> Up front, there's a slightly raised driving position this class of car usually delivers. And it's easy to get comfortable thanks to plenty of flexibility, both from the now more supportive height-adjustable sports seats and the reach-and-rake adjustable three-spoke steering wheel. The latter item is magnesium-framed with multifunction buttons featuring leather stitching and, on an S-Tronic automatic version like this one, gear shift paddles too. Through the spokes, you view the usual crystal clear set of Audi instruments, the two cool white illuminated main dials separated by a driver information system. This is the optional colour version that delivers various trip computer readouts as well as driving and efficiency data. Is it all classy enough? It's a fair question to ask, given fears that Spanish construction of this car, alongside humbler Seats, would lead to a cheap-feeling interior. 
Such worries continue to be groundless with this revised model, which, like its predecessor, manages to offer exactly the same high-quality finish you get in an Audi Q7 model, costing three times as much. It could deliver much of the same kind of luxury ambiance too, if you were to choose the right mix from things like soft and tactile beige and brown leathers and plastics, glossy black and satin silver trims, and dark brown larch wood inlays. As standard, all Q3 variants feature micrometallic platinum dash inlays, but top versions like this one get smarter aluminium trim around areas like these centre dash air vents. It's in this position that you expect to find the kind of central colour infotainment display that's become such a standard feature on most modern family cars. Instead, though, in an upmarket touch, this has been secreted away in a fold-out panel on top of the fascia. It doesn't glide up electrically as it would do on one of Audi's larger models, but it's still one of the little touches that make this cabin feel like that of a much more luxurious car, as does the functionality of the 6.5-inch MMI screen. Tick the right options boxes and via this, thanks to Audi Connect technology, you can do everything from updating your Facebook page to checking the news and local fuel prices. You can plan your journey using Google Earth, check out traffic information online, log into thousands of global radio stations and create in your car a Wi-Fi hotspot. Truly, this is motoring in the 21st century. The cabin technology echoes that. Take this dual zone climate control system, able to tweak itself to suit the prevailing humidity and the position of the sun. But the interior of a car like this needs to be practical too. Hence the provision of door bins capable of taking a 1.5 litre bottle, the usual cup holders and a useful fold out compartment next to the steering wheel. Unfortunately, many of the other interior storage solutions cost extra. Things like nets on the front seat backrests, storage compartments under both front seats, a lockable glove box and a multi-purpose hook in the front passenger footwell. Time to move out back, where plusher versions get this power-operated tailgate that rises to reveal a 420-litre cargo area. To give you some perspective, that's exactly the same as you get from this car's closest rival, BMW's X1, but 61 litres less than the space delivered by this model's other key competitor, Mercedes GLA class. In Audi terms, you're talking of a luggage bay 40 litres bigger than that in the brand's more conventional A3 Sportback, but 120 litres less than you'd find in this model's larger Q5 stablemate. It's the kind of thing you'd expect, in other words, in a car of this kind, with capacity that's easy to access thanks to quite a low 781 millimetres high loading height. Once you get your stuff inside, you may find more awkwardly shaped items slightly compromised by the steeply sloping rear hatch and the high boot floor, raised to accommodate the subwoofer for the optional Bose surround sound stereo system I have here. With that fitted, there's no option to increase the size of the luggage bay to 460 litres by rather unwisely deleting the standard space saver rear wheel and substituting it with a puncture repair kit. Still, Apart from the caveats I've mentioned, the space you do get is practically sized, unencumbered by shock absorbers, which have been usefully pushed to the very outside of the body. The capacity is very usable too, with four lashing points and a reversible boot floor made from velour on one side and plastic on the other, so you can flip it over for the carriage of things like muddy boots and muddy dogs. For a little extra, an optional version of this mat comes with a rubber underside and features fold-out sections that extend to protect the loading sill, the bumpers and the back of the seats from mud and grime. There's also an optional luggage compartment package that gives you a stretch combi net for fixing down objects onto the boot floor, as well as a 12-volt socket a movable side net and a second luggage compartment light. A ski hatch for longer items is a further extra cost feature. If you need ultimate space, then flattening the split folding rear bench releases up to 1,365 litres of it. With the original version of this car, you could go further still by specifying a fold flat front passenger seat. But since Audi's standardisation of sports seats in this model, that option is now no longer possible. Still, there'll be room enough here for most active lifestyles.
expect to pay somewhere in the £25,000 to £31,000 bracket for your Q3, though it is possible to pay around £37,000 for one if you were to opt for the flagship performance RS Q3 variant. That kind of pricing means that if you were looking at one of these as a more interesting alternative to an identically engined version of Audi's more conventional A3 Sportback, the premium required could be fairly substantial. As much as £4,000 in the case of the front-driven 150 PS 2-litre TDI diesel Q3 derivative that sells most strongly. With other Q3 models, the premium over directly comparable A3 is less substantial. But you've still got to really want this car's trendier, lifestyle-orientated image to justify its ownership premium. If you do, then you'll probably fall into one of these three categories of potential Q3 buyer. The first of these will cover those who like this Audi but don't especially prioritise performance or traction. People will probably be quite happy with an entry-level 1.4 TFSI petrol version, a car offered only with front-wheel drive. At the other end of the scale will be those with a need for speed who will be eyeing up the really quick petrol variants, probably the 2-litre TFSI version or even better, the potent flagship RS Q3 high-performance model. These properly fast Q3s come only with all the mechanical bells and whistles, so only with seven-speed Estronic automatic transmission and only with Quattro four-wheel drive. Most buyers of this car, though, won't need tarmac searing performance and will probably be able to pitch their budget above the lineup's entry-level point. There'll also be people looking for more options in their choice of Q3 all of which will almost certainly leave their focus firmly on the 2-litre TDI diesel variants. These offered with either 150 PS beneath the bonnet or, as in this case, a pokier 184 PS output. Going for the lower-powered engine gives you the option of specifying your car in either front-driven form or, for an extra £1,500, getting it with quattro four-wheel drive. The 184 PS variant, on the other hand, comes only in quattro guise. It's also worth mentioning that if you want the option of paying a premium of nearly £1,600 to get your diesel-powered Q3 equipped with an Estronic automatic transmission, you have to choose a Quattro version. On to the value proposition Audi's pricing represents, something you can only accurately assess if you have an understanding of where this car fits into the market. The Q designation slots it into the Ingolstadt brand's growing SUV range and initially leads you to think of this design as merely a slightly smaller mini-me version of the brand's Q5 model, a car that would cost you between £1,800 and £3,200 more than this one in direct like-for-like -like comparisons. Actually, though, this Q3 is in many ways a different thing entirely from its larger Q-series stablemate. Let me explain. A Q5 is a proper compact SUV with a proper permanent four-wheel drive system, sized and designed to offer a premium alternative to cars like Toyota's RAV4 and Honda CR-V. A Q3, in contrast, is a slightly smaller thing, aimed rather differently at the premium end of the growing Qashqai-style crossover market that's full of family hatches with higher ride heights and extra lifestyle attitude, but no real off-roading pretensions. That's why this car's four-wheel drive system is only optional. And even where it is included is a much simpler and less rugged on-demand setup. A family-sized crossover-class car of this sort is increasingly the kind of things buyers seem to want right now. And some of them are prepared to pay higher prices if the model in question comes with extra quality and technology topped off with a premium badge. That's why Audi, BMW and Mercedes all now offer cars of this kind. This Q3 directly pitched against BMW's X1 and Mercedes GLA class and priced directly against those two rivals. Your choice between the trio will probably come down to personal preference, but it's worth mentioning that this Q3 offers a little more power than you get from an equivalent GLA and a little more efficiency than that you get from a comparable X1. All three of these contenders would probably cost you around £2,000 to £3,000 more than a top-spec version of a more mainstream-branded Qashqai-class family crossover model. Hopefully that makes the pricing proposition a little clearer. As ever, there are pluses and minuses to buying a car of any class with a premium badge. On one hand, it means paying the sort of money that will buy you a mainstream-branded model in a larger market category 
maybe in this case a volume badged version of the kind of compact soft roading SUV class car I was talking about earlier. After all, Q3 money would certainly get you a nice Toyota RAV4, a Honda CRV, a Jeep Cherokee, or Mazda CX5. While similar cars that will also be more spacious than this Audi, contenders like Ford's Cuga or Volkswagen's Tiguan would actually offer quite a saving. All of these alternatives, though, would cost more to run and would depreciate much faster. And none would deliver the smug feeling of driveway quality that this car is supposed to provide. It may well leave you concluding that it is a Q3 that you really want. And if so, then you're going to need to know just how generous Audi has been with the standard spec. Well, let's see. Even with baseline SE trim, you get alloy wheels of at least 17 inches in size, plus Xenon Plus headlights with LED daytime running lights, LED tail lamps, front fog lights, aluminium roof rails, heated washer jets, acoustic glass, rear parking sensors, auto headlamps and wipers, powered heated mirrors, a Thatcham Category 1 alarm, and the kind of space saver spare wheel that so many brands make you pay extra for these days. Inside, you'll find dual-zone electronic climate control, a three-spoke leather-trimmed multifunction sports steering wheel, a driver information system trip computer, a front-centre armrest and height-adjustable sports seats with four-way electric lumbar support. At the rear, there's a split-folding rear bench and a reversible boot floor. It's also worth stressing that the desirable Audi Drive Select driving dynamic system is now standard across the range. A setup that enables you to tweak the throttle response and steering feel to suit the mood you're in and the road that you're on. Gear change timings too if you've opted to pay extra for S-Tronic automatic transmission. There's also plenty of standard audio and communications equipment accessible via a retractable 6.5-inch MMI infotainment display screen. From here, you can control an eight-speaker CD stereo system with DAB radio and connect in your personal devices via the Audi Music interface that allows you to link iPods, iPads and iPhones into the MMI setup using an aux in socket. There's also voice control functionality and Bluetooth compatibility for your phone, plus an SD card reader that's also useful for this car's so-called navigation preparation feature. With this, you can retrospectively add in satellite navigation to your car at any point during ownership, merely by purchasing the appropriate SD card from your local Audi centre. Is it worth finding the extra £2,500 or so to graduate from base SE trim to the mid-range S-Line spec I have here? Perhaps. S-Line models do certainly get a smarter look thanks to lower suspension, smarter bumpers, larger 18-inch wheels, all-weather LED headlights an extra chrome on the radiator grille, on the fog light surrounds and on the tailpipes. Plus you get embossed cloth and leather sports seats, aluminium trim on the dash and the door sills, power folding mirrors, headlamp washers and a power operated tailgate. S-Line spec Q3s also feature firmer sports suspension, but a word with your Audi salesperson will see you able to deselect this feature if you wish in favour of the standard softer dynamic setup that's far better suited to our appalling roads. We'd do exactly that. Of course, if you really want the plushest possible Q3, you can go a lot further either by opting for the plushest S-Line Plus trim level or by perusing the lengthy options list. Let's start with the driving stuff. There are a whole range of parking systems to consider, ranging from something as simple as adding the Parking System Plus front sensors to splashing out on one of the Parking System Advanced with rear-reversing camera packages. Getting yourself that camera also gives you the option to include an extra Park Assist function that will automatically steer you into the tightest space. As for improving your Q3's dynamics, well, keen drivers will certainly want to consider the adaptive damping system that enables you to set up the suspension to suit the road you're on via the auto and dynamic modes of the drive select system. You might need this option too if you specify the largest 18 or 19 inch alloy wheels as they really firm up the ride. As for other niceties, well, many buyers will want to look at getting their Q3 specified with features like satellite navigation, full leather trim, privacy glass, an LED interior light package, a TV tuner, cruise control and an adventurous looking off-road styling package. Other possible extras include a huge panoramic glass roof, 
keyless entry and start, and a thumping 14-speaker, 465-watt Bose surround sound audio setup. There's a storage package that gives you nets on the front seat backrests, storage compartments under both front seats, a lockable glove box and a multi-purpose hook in the front passenger footwell that'll be ideal for your Friday night curry. We'd also want the luggage compartment package that gives you a stretch combi net for fixing down objects onto the boot floor, as well as a 12-volt socket, a movable side net and a second luggage compartment light. Plus, we'd be tempted to tick the box for the optional through-load facility with its useful ski hatch into the rear bench. Another must-have is the Audi phone box option that can connect your smartphone handset into the car aerial for better reception. Talking of smartphone integration, buyers are also going to need to give some thought to Audi's multimedia offerings. Primarily the technology package that includes a higher resolution colour infotainment instrumentation binnacle display and an MMI navigation plus sat-nav system, along with a hard disk drive jukebox function which can be used to store up to 20 gigabytes of music. Best of all, technology package customers now get all the benefits of the Audi Connect multimedia setup that can bring a whole range of internet-based services into your car. This is a system that allows you to stay fully networked on the move, giving you everything from uh, weather information to news online, parking info and fuel prices. There's online media streaming that allows you to connect into thousands of global radio stations, a traffic information online setup that warns you of impending queues, and the opportunity to create in your car a Wi-Fi hotspot into which you can connect your mobile devices. You'll also be able to navigate using Google Earth and Google Street View and plan your trip in advance via Google Maps on your PC, then forward directions to your car. On to safety. Options here include a side assist blind spot monitoring system to stop you dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another vehicle, an active lane assist lane keeping assist system to stop dozy drivers from drifting out of their lanes on the motorway, a camera that can read and display speed limit signs as you pass them and headlamps that can automatically dip themselves for you at night. You can also specify a trailer stabilisation system that comes with automatic trailer detection. It'll all keep a swaying trailer firmly in check. The very few buyers likely to be taking their cars on steep, slippery slopes might also want to consider optional hill descent control too. These people, incidentally, will be thankful for the interim off-road setting. You get a standard in this car's ESC stability control system, providing for optimal traction off the beaten track. Beyond all this, though, there's a surprising absence of the kind of optional camera-based safety features that some of today's smarter crossover models offer at extra cost. Things like collision avoidance and radar-based cruise control systems. Still, you do get a clever secondary collision brake assist feature, a standard across the Q3 range. There to automatically brake the car after a crash to make sure you don't go on to hit something else. The effects of any impact you do have should be mitigated by a three-level crash structure at the front that includes a lower tier of deformable metal designed to match the crumple zone of a lower vehicle and therefore prevent overriding in a head-on accident. To prevent such a thing happening in the first place, there are the usual electronic aids for traction and braking. The latter ABS system aided in emergency stops by a brake assist setup that should reduce your stopping distance, at the same time as following motorists are alerted to the emergency stop by the flashing of automatically activating adaptive brake lights. Otherwise, the standard safety provision runs to most of what you would expect to find. Though it's a little annoying to find that you have to pay extra for a hill holder clutch that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. All Q3s do, though, come with Isofix child seat fastenings, tyre pressure monitoring and twin front, side and curtain airbags, as well as the option of rear side airbags. Lower running costs are one of the key things that in recent times have driven family buyers to consider compact crossover models like this Q3 as an alternative to a more traditional compact SUV. These improvements in fuel economy and CO2 come courtesy of the reduction that crossovers tend to deliver in one simple area, weight. So it is here. 
A two litre TDI diesel C3 Quattro model like the one I'm driving here will save you nearly 200 kilos. That's the weight of three fully sized adults over a directly comparable two litre TDI diesel Audi Q5 with almost the same engine. As a result, the Q3 will go nearly 10 miles further on every gallon and pump out nearly 25 grams per kilometer less CO2. Hard stats to ignore, particularly if you have an eye on benefit in kind taxation. Some of the reasons why this Q3 is so much lighter than its larger stablemate are fairly obvious. It's clearly a little smaller and it uses a simpler on-demand Quattro four-wheel drive system that only activates when you need it to rather than the Q5's more rugged permanent setup. There's more to it than that though, with Audi having gone the extra mile to trim every ounce of unnecessary bulk from this car. So there's light but very strong hot shaped steel to make up 13% of the body and a bonnet and tailgate made from aluminium, making these two parts 50% lighter than they normally would be. As a result, the lightest petrol version of this car tips the scales at just 1,385 kilos, not much more than a super mini. Of course, the efficiency of this Audi isn't just down to its light weight. There's a start-stop system to cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Low rolling resistance tyres are fitted across the range. And of course, a lot of work has gone on under the bonnet in a now fully Euro 6 compatible turbocharged engine range, which offers CO2 emission improvements of up to 17% over the original version of this car, despite increases in power. The improvement in question applies specifically to the most economy-focused variant in the range, the front-wheel drive 2.0-litre TDI 150 PS diesel model, a car able to return 61.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 119 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's an improvement of 7 miles per gallon and 18 grams per kilometre over the original base 2.0-litre TDI version of this car, a result putting this entry-level Q3 diesel model's efficiency onto a par with the running cost returns you get from an equivalent but less powerful Mercedes GLA 200 CDI. It also positions this Audi well ahead of a directly comparable BMW X1 S-Drive 18D. Of course, if you want your diesel-powered 2.0-litre TDI Q3 to come with Quattro four-wheel drive, it'll cost you a little more to run. A 150 PS 2.0-litre TDI Quattro variant manages 56.5 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 131 grams per kilometre of CO2. Opt for the 184 PS model I'm trying here, and those figures deteriorate only slightly to 53.3 miles per gallon and 139 grams per kilometre. We'd suggest, though, you don't automatically opt for a diesel before considering the merits of this Q3 in its 1.4-litre TFSI 150 PS entry-level petrol guise. In this form, the car gets a really clever slice of Vorsprung Dirk Technik, thanks to a smart cylinder-on-demand technology that deactivates two of the engine's four cylinders under light throttle loads. As a result, this variant is able to return the kind of figures you'd have expected from a diesel in this class not so long ago. 50.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 128 grams per kilometre of CO2. Specifying your car with larger 18 or 19 inch wheels will obviously slightly affect those returns. So will opting for Estronic automatic transmission, a gearbox you have to have if you want a really pokey petrol model like the 180 PS 2 litre TFSI Quattro variant. This manages 42.8 miles per gallon and 152 grams per kilometre, a reasonable return considering the performance on offer. For the sake of completeness, I'll also give you the figures for the very quickest version, the 2.5-litre RSQ3 Quattro. A car with a now Euro 6 compatible engine, capable of 32.8 miles per gallon and 203 grams per kilometre. All those quoted figures inevitably assume the driver to be doing his or her bit, possibly by keeping an eye on the useful efficiency program in the driver information system trip computer on the dash, but certainly by selecting the eco-conscious efficiency setting in the standard drive select vehicle dynamics setup. This focuses all of the car's systems on saving energy, tweaking the air conditioning, softening the throttle response and altering gear shift timings on S-Tronic automatic models. On the highway at cruising speeds with an Astronic version of this car in the efficiency mode, your Q3 also has another eco trick up its sleeve. The software able to disengage the clutch every time you lift off the throttle to allow the car to coast unencumbered by engine braking. Audi reckons that this will save an average owner up to 2% on their annual fuel bill. 
The Q3 doesn't actually need gizmos like this to record best-in-class overall running costs. The price of ongoing maintenance, for example, probably won't be as high as you might be expecting thanks to careful design. One example of this being the way the bumper is made up of three parts, so making it cheaper to repair after a collision. Further assistance here is provided by the affordable Audi Complete Service and Maintenance Packages that can take care of all your service and maintenance need and optionally your tyre needs as well for up to three years. Plus there's a choice of either long life or fixed inspection servicing regimes depending on whether you plan to cover either more or less than 10,000 miles a year. A bigger buying incentive though for most owners will be the low depreciation. According to experts, Cap Monitor, a Q3 2 litre TDI 184 PS variant, like the one I'm trying here, will retain well over 2,000 more of its value over three years and 60,000 miles than a directly comparable rival BMW X1 X Drive 20D. Figures like those lead to impressively low pence per mile running costs. Cap Monitor reckoned that most diesel versions of this Audi would probably save you about three pence per mile of a, a comparable BMW X1. On to the warranty, which covers you for unlimited mileage in the first two years of ownership and for up to 60,000 miles in year three. It's possible to extend this cover into four years, 75,000 mile, or five year, 90,000 mile packages at extra cost. That only leaves insurance groupings. Customers looking at mainstream petrol models will need to know that the 1.4 TFI COD variant is rated at Group 20E and the 2 litre TFSI petrol derivative is rated at Group 28E. If you're thinking diesel, then expect the 2 litre TDI 150 PS variant to be rated at Group 21E, while this 2 litre TDI 184 PS Q3 comes in at Group 25E. Audi knows better than most manufacturers that there's never a one-size-fits-all solution to modern motoring, hence the range of options offered by its various Q-series models. This one could well be all the car you actually need. Don't think of it as a shrunken version of its Q5 compact SUV stablemate. It isn't really any kind of SUV. Instead, offering a smarter, more upmarket take on the current trends towards lifestyle-orientated Qashqai class five-seat crossovers. Sensible, stylish, fashionable cars that are striking such a sweet spot in the current market. As with almost any model of this kind, this one can easily manage the school run, an extended shopping trip, a weekend away or the annual family holiday to Chamonix. The difference here though lies in the quality, the depth of engineering and the sheer feel-good factor that you'll get by having this car in your driveway. Compromise is necessary to create its relatively affordable price tag have been cleverly chosen and detract little from the extremely polished end result. One that in this improved first generation guise delivers on its promises of greater efficiency and extra technology. It's a little sharper to drive too though could be more responsive in that respect. Ultimately though this Audi's priorities lie in other areas. Yes, you can certainly buy something slightly bigger and SUV-ish for this kind of money, but after trying a Q3, you probably won't want to.